Service is rather an incongruous title uh, because the one thing you don't see in this play is any service. The play is set in the restaurant of a four-star hotel and the characters play a role within that department with one outsider being the banqueting and conference manager. In a previous existence, I worked for nearly three years in a five-star deluxe Mayfair hotel. So all the dastardly Machiavellian shenanigans that feature in this play rang a bell. For I discovered that on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, housekeeping were at odds with minibar. Restaurant with banqueting, concierge with portering, and on the other days, housekeeping with restaurant, concierge with minibar, etc. etc. And every department was at odds with security 24 7. All departments were lorded over by front of house, who looked down upon everyone. Even the guests, I felt, at times. Over time, I developed the impression that all hotel staff's natural environment is the primary school playground. Service is a farce, in the fashion of the great BBC sitcom Faulty Towers of the 1970s. Sheila Susan Monkton is a heavily pregnant restaurant manageress undergoing hormonal fluctuations that are making her a little crazy. In the opening episode, she is devising a test uh, to see who will replace her while she is on maternity leave. The candidates are Gavin, played by Sam Harding, who she hates. By that I mean the character, not Sam Harding. Stephen, Grant Cowley, who can't put a foot wrong. And Sarah, who she thinks, and for that matter so do the others, is pretty dim. In fact, she is a manipulative, cunning schemer and manages to secure the temporary position. There are three more episodes uh, together, making two in each half. The play is produced by Cardiff-based Clock Tower Theatre Company. The genesis of this play lies in the Cardiff Fringe Festival where the episodes were presented individually. This tour is the first time that the whole output has been put together into one show. The enthusiastic and energetic young cast of six strive hard to please. Maybe a little too hard at times. Grant Cowley's Stephen is a Basil Fawlty-like character, even to the extent of emulating John Cleese's silly walk. Mark Nunnington as Marshall, the bombastic banqueting and conferencing manager, 
reminded me of a toned-down Lord Flashheart from the Black Adder series of the 1980s, who was played by the much-missed Rick Mayall. An important aspect of any farce is timing, and in that respect, the entire cast performed admirably. One thing which I think is a weakness is that all the characters are white Brits. Harking back to my kindergarten years uh, at the Five Star Hotel, it was very much like working at the UN. All the concierge staff were Italian, so naturally they were referred to as the concierge mafia. Minibar was largely populated by Germans, and the restaurant staff were nearly all French. Maybe the writer uh, was conscious of introducing a Manuel-type character would draw adverse criticism of it being a rip-off of Faulty Towers. But I would like to have seen this uh, for the sake of authenticity, if nothing else. George Infini, uh, who has written and directed the play, understands his audience and moves the action along at a breathtaking pace. Due to transport complications, I didn't see the last episode. But I feel that another 25 minutes of relentless comic farce, and it may have outstayed its welcome. But if your bag is lowbrow, baldy comedy, which just errs on the right side of smuttiness, you will be royally entertained. Service runs for 130 minutes, including a 20-minute interval. Strong language throughout and sexual references uh, makes it a performance suitable for those over the age of 16.